Hey, if you're watching this video, that means you just saw the inventory demo for Gloomwood. Uh, and now I am here, me, Dave Oshray, with uh, Dylan Rogers and David Szymanski, the co-creators of Gloomwood. And we're going to talk about how we, uh, how we designed that inventory, how we came up with what you saw in that video, what we literally spent the last two months working on since we released the Gloomwood demo at Not E3. Uh, so I guess first, guys... Um, Let's talk about the inspirations for uh, for the inventory because some are pretty obvious, some maybe not so obvious. Dylan, you wanna you wanna start there? Yeah. Um, so uh, because the game is survival horror and an immersive sim, uh, those were the two places that we that we started looking at. And um, two of my favorite inventory systems is uh, are from Resident Evil Four, the Attacher case, and uh, Arx Fatalis, the um, the, the kind of inventory where you can drag items in and out of the game world. Yeah. And yeah. Um, we wanted to keep the element that the, the inventory was like this in-world thing that you like put down. So it was kind of that like blend of those inspirations and what we already had. Yeah. And I was, I was, I was concerned cause I was like, you know, cause you know, the Deus Ex inventory, you know, in the Resident Evil, it works, but I never found it like diegetic, right? Like I never believed that Adam Jensen could pull a sniper rifle out of his ass simply because he has enough cubes in his, you know, little inventory. So with Gloomwood, you know, I was keen to do like the, the grid and stuff, but I really wanted it to feel like diegetic, you know, immersive, um, you know, make it a bag big enough that actually looks like, you know, the doctor could fit everything, everything in there. Um, and, you know, because we have, you know, pretty small weapons, a folding shotgun um, and stuff that actually works uh, like that, uh, we came up with the idea of a doctor's bag, you know, that's, that were actually pretty big in the Victorian era. I think we went back and looked at, you know, lots of different doctor's bags and we were like, Doc could actually fit a bunch of shit in here if we really wanted to. Um, so we came up with the idea that was basically a suitcase. Um, and then we, you know, we, I said, you know, I originally, I was, I wasn't keen on the grid because I was like, you know, oh, how are we going to do this with controllers? If we port the consoles and how are we going to do the arcs thing where you can drag and drop into the world? Oh, this is, this is way too much work for us. We'll never pull this off. We did. Um, but you know, I was like, well, maybe we'll do a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And Dylan, I think at one point was just like, well, let's just try doing everything. Let's try fucking, let's, yeah. let's, let's do Resident Evil. Let's do Deus Ex. Let's do Arcs. Let's combine all the inventory systems for all these games. And I was like, I was like, dude, if you can make it work, I would love that. I have my doubts, but you did. I think once I saw you do that video where you took a syringe out, we had a video internally where Dylan puts the bag down, he takes a syringe out, and then he throws a syringe at a window and it breaks the glass. And I was like, oh, that's the cool, that's, yeah, that's it. We're doing this. We're doing the arcs thing. So getting that work was really good. But the a problem we ran into, um, and I think was, and David hasn't said anything yet because he's such a nice yeah. kind of boy, uh, was we had, we have a, like a lot of shit and a lot of equipment. And we didn't want to have this giant, you know, it had to fit in a bag. We didn't know, like, where are we going to put the cane sword, but also have room for the shotgun and the revolver? Are we going to have to make it so you, you can't carry everything at once? That doesn't make any sense. And we're working on a harpoon gun. Where is that going to go? You know, how do we separate, you know, how do we have room for equipment plus ammo, plus health items, plus cheese and keys and everything like that? So, David, what were some of the ideas you were starting to come up with there to try to figure this thing out? Oh gosh, there was a whole bunch. Um, I mean, we talked about like uh, just having certain items just sort of go into an invisible inventory that you didn't have to worry about, and then having like health items be in random things like that, where like, oh, these are the these are the ones you actually have to worry about. These are the ones you actually have to like put in to take out. But that didn't seem right because the whole point of it is it's supposed to be like diegetic. Uh, yeah, and sort of emergent in a way. Like, like one thing I really wanted is to make sure that if the player wanted to, they can um, they can just stock up on a whole bunch of not things that aren't weapons and leave behind Jeez. like all their weapons. Yeah, just Jeez stock and them garbage and yeah, yeah and <laughs> random garbage and run around like that because, yeah. as Dylan said before, it's like it's part survival horror, part immersive sim, and it's like you want to let the player be able to do things like that and not just yeah. not just force them onto like here is the you know here is the optimal way that we've designed the game around um, yeah, like if you want to do a cheese only run with no weapons like we want to make it so the yeah. player could potentially do that the difficulty of like 
any adding any UI elements around the back or the suitcase was that we needed that space to like drag items in and out of the game world. Yeah. Because yeah. it's it's both like it's both like an inventory. Yeah, because, it's both an inventory yeah. and part of the of, of the game. Like, like yeah. So and we yeah. so then we were like, well, we we can't. There's some items you can't drop, right? If we do the harpoon gun, which is basically our rope arrows, like how do we? What if the player leaves that behind, and we have places in the game where they need it to get to somewhere? You know, um, you know how do if we have items like the cane sword, which you have to have all the time because you need it to you know essentially break things and you know do stuff with it. It's your default weapon. Uh, how, what happens if the player leaves that behind? There's certain equipment that basically we want the player always to have, but we didn't have anywhere to put it that wouldn't take up inventory space, and we still needed that inventory space. So I started thinking like galaxy brain ideas. I'm like, oh, well, what if the case opens and the, and the cane sword strapped to the top uh, and the harpoon guns like, s you know, slinged around you like a bandolier or something like that. But we're like, well, then how would, then we'd have to make an animation where he throws it down every time. And it was just like, we couldn't figure out where to put all this shit but still have stuff that was necessary like the cane sword and the harpoon gun and and then or puzzle stuff. items yeah or... puzzle oh yeah puzzle items quest items and then have stuff that we don't care about that you can not use use or not use like you know cheese health uh ammo shotgun revolver um and then dylan because he who's been designing the bag came up with the most galaxy brain idea that I think I have ever come across in all my years of game dev, which was, he was like, well, what if the shelf flips over and it has an equipment yeah. side? And we were all just like, it was like, <laughs> it's brilliant. It was, I, I was like, that's it. That's it. We figured it out. And then um, put the damn thing on wheels. It's yeah. Fine. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're like, he's like, it's like some real Q James Bond doctor's bag now. Right. Like, yeah. uh, so then Dylan did that mock-up with the 3d model and it pops up and it flips over. And I was like, that's the coolest shit ever. And then Dylan, do you want to talk about how you kind of iterated on that and made that work? Yeah. Um, I, I thought like the best way to, to, to basically buy us more space for the inventory was to just reuse the space that we currently had. So, uh, and it was a really fun way to kind of give it personality. So uh, like the inventory like opens up and this this like shelf comes up on these like little uh, like supports and ha the wheels kind of like go in a little uh, slot. And it, it, it gave it a lot of life. You could like open the backpack, you could have like a mechanical noise come up uh, and this is when we started to like uh, give the uh, the assets to one of our modelers and artists, Blood Machine, and she started to experiment with like, oh, you know, the, this is what this should look like, and it should feel really like mechanical and yeah, uh, little, the, instead of wheels, it became little gears, and then you know, yeah. the leather trim and the and the uh, the velvet interior, and you know, she did an amazing job, and it all just started to come yeah. together. And I remember the first time you like showed that we did the animation test where you throw it down and it pops up and the wheels spin and you had the sounds in there. We're like, holy shit, this is really cool. Yeah. I mean, there's uh, the inventory of Gloomwood is a game unto itself, right? Uh, you know, there's more game in there than in some games, and I think that's one yeah. of the coolest parts about it. Um, and we wanted to have everything, though, not just being able to use the inventory, drag things out of the inventory, but also being able to inspect things, because, you know, that's one of the, you know, things from games like that, being able to, like, you know, hold something up, spin the wheel of cheese around, look at it from different angles, why not? Um, because that's, you know, it's an immersive sim. We want to give you as much agency over your stuff as possible, you know? Um, and I think what we ended up coming up with is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and you just saw it for the first time today. So we, that's what, if anybody asks what Dylan has been working on for the past few months since the demo, it's the intro of the game, but mostly this inventory system. And, uh, you know, while I was hesitant at first to go all in, I think uh, from what you guys have seen, it definitely, I think it paid off. And I think we ended up with something really, really cool and really, really special for the game. Yeah, it's a it's it's a very cool system. I remember when I gave the concept to David, he was like, "Oh, so the coolest uh, inventory system ever for a survival <laughs> horror and immersive." Yeah, system. it's just yeah, no, a mashup of the the coolest inventory systems that exist in first person games, or well, not just first, yeah. but in these in these sort of games, and just mashing them together into one like uber chad inventory yeah. which we didn't uber know was going to work it, it could yeah. have just easily just been like this is awful but i mean yeah. that's why not let's try it yeah that's game development 
so yeah, uh, we'll be showing more Gloomwood soon. Uh, we are going to be working uh, on the intro and then working towards early access. So if you're interested to find out more, obviously you can find us at Dave Ashray, at Taffer King 451 at DuskDev, uh, and then gloomwood.com or obviously thiefwithguns.com. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Thank you. <laughs>